Hi, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots. Today we're continuing the AWS Basics series by talking about AWS IoT Greengrass, which I'll be calling Greengrass for the rest of this video. Greengrass is a way of deploying software to an edge device, like a server on a factory floor, and managing the lifecycle of that software. From the cloud, you can figure out, uh, or you can configure what software gets deployed to it and how that software is configured. And you can build your own software to be deployed by Greengrass. So that's what we'll be looking at in this video, is the cloud side, which lets you configure and manage deployments. The edge side, where you install an edge agent called the Nucleus that makes it available to Greengrass, and how to bundle up software into components that can be deployed to the edge. So let's start by taking a look at the console. So this is the AWS IoT Greengrass console. There's a lot of good information here. I encourage you to take a look. There's a diagram showing a lot of what we're talking about and some key terminology that we'll be covering in this video. But mostly what we'll be talking about is in these subheadings here. Now, we'll ignore groups because that's from V1 of Greengrass and I'm talking about V2, but core devices, components, and deployments are the major parts of how we talk about the cloud service. So let's start off by talking about core devices. Here we can see the list of core devices. A core device is a, a server or a device at the edge which has been registered with Greengrass as a core device using the Nucleus. Nucleus is software that you deploy to it and that manages the lifecycle of components and reports up to Greengrass. So we can see, for example, Demo Core 1, which is an EC2 instance I've set up as a Greengrass device. And we can see all the information that Greengrass has about this component, about this uh, core device, sorry. So we can see its status. We've got a link to logs, the platform. Um, we can see that it's healthy and we can see all of the components that are running on it. We can also see what deployments have deployed to it because one core device can have multiple deployments. There's only one deployment for this core device. So let's take a look at deployment for demo core one. Now deployment is its own concept. It is the group of components and their configuration like version number and some other configuration I'll show you. Uh, it is that group that is sent to a core device, that is deployed to a core device. It has its own status, uh, its own creation date, and the list of components that are deployed to it. So for Demo Core 1, we've got the CLI here, and we've got this custom component that I've created called uh, com.mic.helloworld. And we can take a look at the configuration here as well. So for this particular component, we can view the configuration and see that I've changed the message to YouTube. So that's the list of core devices, with each core device having one or more deployments. And the deployments deploy components, which is the last page that we'll talk about for the cloud service. Now, there's a couple of types of components that we're interested in here. The first tab that opens is the My Components page, which is all the components that you've built and deployed to your own Greengrass account, or AWS account with Greengrass in. So there's only one custom component here, we can see it was published by Mike Likes Robots and the latest version number. And if we take a look inside, there's a bit more information, but we'll look at this component in more detail later in the video. On top of my components, there's public components. Now these are the components that are made available by AWS that can be deployed to any core device. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here. I encourage you to look at the docs if you want to, mo if you want to know more. On top of my components and public components, there's also community components. So if we look at this and open the GitHub and scroll down a bit, we can see the list of components in community components. Now this is a list of components that the Greengrass team keeps track of. And you can take a look at any of these like InfluxDB and it will contain instructions for how to build and deploy it to your own account so that you can deploy that component to any of your Greengrass core devices. If you do deploy one of those components, it will appear under this My Components list. So that's what we can do in the cloud. We can see the list of core devices that are available, the deployments that are deployed to those core devices, and the components 
that are available to deploy, both private and AWS supplied. But how do we actually set up a core device? To show you how to do that, I'm going to create an EC2 instance and set it up with the very basics needed, and then I'll show you how to do that installation. So here we are in the EC2 instance that will be a new Greengrass core device. And all I've done so far is set up the AWS credentials. So I'll link this page in the description. It's the developer guide for how to install Greengrass. It's got a couple of useful commands that we need. But to provide the credentials, I've just done what it asked and added these variables for my account. The other command that we'll need from this page is the Java installation. This is the command we need. So we'll run this in the console. And that's the environment setup done as far as we need it. So we could continue to follow these instructions to download and install the core software. There's commands that we can use, but uh, there's an easier way, in my opinion, that I would recommend using, which is that instead of copying this command and adjusting the settings for yourself, instead work through the console. So we can set up a core device. Let's call it uh, demo core two. Ah, which already exists, so we'll call it demo core three. I'm going to put no group, but in if you wanted to have a group of core devices and deploy to an entire group at once, this is how you would do it. And then I'm running on Linux AL2, so I'll be following these instructions. Now I've already set up the credentials, so I'll copy this installer. which is downloaded, and then I'll run this command. And this is essentially the same as this command, except with everything filled out that we want. So it's got the right region, it's got the right thing name. So the installer is complete, and we can see that what it's doing here is creating the Greengrass core device it's provisioning any resources it needs in the cloud, such as permissions, and any resources it needs on the system, like groups and users. Once it's complete, the core device is up and running. And we can see that by looking in the cloud. So on our list of core devices, we've now got demo core three, and we can see there's no components on it. But if we look at the deployment, we can see it's active, meaning that it is currently deploying software onto that Greengrass core device. Now it's complete, which means that the deployment was successful. So if we look at the core device again, let's zoom that back out a bit. Once it's complete, we can see all of these components are available. Now the only one that's been deployed is the CLI. But all of these other components are also available because the CLI depends on them. So the nucleus, telemetry agent, and so on, Greengrass will manage dependencies for you if they're specified correctly and make sure all the components required are on the system. So this is our new deployment and just contains the CLI. But this is our new core device. We don't just want the CLI on it. Let's install a component. To do that, we're going to revise the deployment. The name is fine. We can select components. Now we can deploy any AWS components we want by unticking this show only selected components. But the only other component we want is the my component here, hello world. So we'll take this and we want to configure it. We want to change the message that it's printing. So this is the configuration screen. We can see the default configuration, which contains all of the default parameters, which we want to override. So we've got a message, we've got a period, and we've got some access control, which the component needs to be able to talk to the Greengrass core to send IoT messages. I'll show that more when we look at the component's recipe. So this message field is what we want to change. So we'll copy this and change it to newest core device. 
We'll confirm that, and that's all of our components configured. Now there's some advanced settings. Feel free to dig through these options, but none of them apply to us, so we're just going to skip forward. The review all looks good, so we deploy. Now we can wait for the deployment to take effect, and the deployment status uh, will be updating automatically, or you can click this arrow to refresh a bit quicker. Now this is the problem, the deployment status has failed, and the device status is now listed as unhealthy. So what exactly is going wrong here? Well, to figure that out, we need to go into the core device to take a look. Let me zoom this in a bit more. Now, Greengrass does allow during installation to select the folder for it to be installed to, but I don't see any reason for my use that I'd want to install it anywhere other than the default directory. The default directory is slash greengrass slash v2. So let's take a look at the logs in there. Now the directory is protected under another user, so we either need to add our user to that group or use sudo. I tend to just use sudo. Uh, and it helps if you use the right command. Okay, so we can see some log files available here, which are rendering a bit strangely. But greengrass.log is the main nucleus log, so we can see whether the deployments were successful here. But that's not why we'll see our error in this case, because the error is with the only component that we've added to the system, which is this hello world component. So let's take a look inside there. Now, if we take a look at these error messages, we can see no module named pip. That's because this is a Python-based module that uses pip to install its dependencies, but pip isn't on the system. So we need to install that for it to work. So we're going to come out of there and then install Python 3 pip. Once that's complete, we need to update the deployment. We're going to revise the deployment again, but not change any settings. OK, the deployment has completed. And we should see our device status going back to healthy. There it is. So now our component is active on the system. What exactly is the component doing? If we take a look at those logs again. We can see that it is printing hello newest core device because that is the message that we ask it to print in the configuration. It's also sending messages to IoT Core, which we can see if we go into the test client. Now we can see two messages being printed here. One because of the demo core one device, which is sending hello YouTube, and one because of our latest core device, which is sending newest core device. So we'll pause those and we can see that message being printed. So not only can we print on the system and store that in log files that are automatically managed by Greengrass, but we can also interact with the Greengrass core software to send messages to IoT core. For that, I don't need to provision my own certificate. I can just talk directly to the Greengrass core software, having granted permission in the configuration, and the Greengrass core software will push those messages up to IoT core. So, so far, we've seen the AWS IoT Greengrass service, which is in the cloud, and it manages core devices, deployments to core devices, and components that can be deployed. We've also seen how to install the Nucleus onto an Edge device to turn it into a Greengrass core device, and how to deploy software to that core device. Now we want to have a quick look at a custom component to see what's in one and how Greengrass understands how to run it. 
So here we can see the source code for the component we just saw running. We saw it printing messages to the log file and sending those messages to IoT Core. So let's see how it goes about doing that. In this repository, it's got the standard stuff, including the readme on how to build and publish it. And if we look inside the hello world folder, this contains the component. So it's written in Python, and we can see that the main.py is just import some modules and repeatedly give them the message and then sleep for a particular period. And we can see the arguments that are passed into it to make that happen. Very simple, nothing groundbreaking here. One thing that's interesting to look at is how to pass messages to the Greengrass core. We have available from the IoT SDK from AWS, the Greengrass core IPC, meaning we can send messages with inter-process communication. If we have the correct permissions, we can ask Greengrass core to publish to IoT core. And by giving it a particular message, we hand that off and let that publish to the cloud. But the most important file to look at here is the recipe. This file is how the Greengrass core device understands where to get the software to run and how to run it. So we have configuration with default configuration. That defines any configuration for when you're running the component and any access control needed to give it permission to interact with other services on the core device. We also have a list of manifests. This only has one because it's pretty simple and it only runs on Python, so it's not restricted to a particular operating system. So our OS is all. But we could have multiple manifests for different operating systems that allow us to run on different systems. Our artifacts here specify that we've got a hello world zip and that our unarchive method is zip, meaning when we publish the component, the zip is pushed into an S3 bucket. Now, when that component gets deployed to a core device, it will, it will download that zip file from the S3 bucket and then unzip it in order to be able to run it. That's important because it needs access to that S3 bucket. So when it comes to building and publishing components, we need to do it to a, pub, uh, to a bucket that either has public access or we need to grant permission to our core device to be able to access that bucket. Now there's other methods of deploying. For example, you can deploy Docker images that go into ECR or somewhere else, or you can run Lambda functions at the edge. But for us, uh, a zip is fine. We can build some files and put them into the zip to be pushed to the S3 bucket. The lifecycle shows only two stages because it's a simple component. We have an install stage where we install all our dependencies into a virtual environment and a run stage where we activate that virtual environment and then run our code with our configuration parameters. So this is where we can pass in any component specific configuration that we're getting from Greengrass. So that's the anatomy of a Greengrass component. We've seen the source code that gets bundled into a zip and pushed to S3. And we've seen the recipe that contains the configuration and instructions on how to install and run the component. Overall, we've seen Greengrass in the cloud with its list of core devices, deployments of components to those core devices, and available components, both private and public AWS. We've seen the nucleus, which you can install onto an edge device to turn it into a Greengrass core device. And we've seen deploying and configuring components at the edge. So here's your challenge. Clone the code from the GitHub repository, I'll link in the description, and see if you can configure the topic dynamically using configuration. Let me know how you get on, and I'll see you in the next one.